Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists physicians with uh, employment contract issues uh, and practice issues as well. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, how does a physician properly terminate a patient from their practice. So there are a number of considerations when you're going to terminate a patient. Uh, <clears throat> there are generally three main things that the physician has to do. So they can't be accused of either patient abandonment uh, or some other kind of you know, ethical lapse. Uh, so first, the physician needs to provide a written notice. Uh, I would suggest sending a certified letter to the address on file of the patient. Uh, I would also send them an email as well. Uh, that way the patient can't state that they never received any notice. You also need to provide a reasonable amount of time for the patient to find a substitute provider. Uh, now, this is obviously specialty dependent. Uh, it's easier for some patients to find a replacement than others, uh, but <clears throat> unless there's some kind of egregious act on the part of the patient, you can't just you know, terminate the patient on a Monday uh, and say, I'm done providing any care for you, move on. So you need to find a reasonable amount of time to allow them to find a new provider, um, could it even assist in that. But I guess ultimately in that scenario, it would kind of depend upon the reason why you're terminating the patient. Now there are a number of factors you can terminate. One, uh, simply maybe the Physicians retiring and not transitioning the practice to someone else. Maybe they've taken a new position out of town and they're moving. I mean, those are normal things that can happen. Uh, now, if it's a behavioral concern on the side of the patient, that complicates things a little bit. Um, so maybe they became verbally abusive to staff or the physician. Um, maybe they, they have mental health issues and it's just making the care impossible. Uh, maybe like in pain management, they signed a pain contract with the physician and they violated that contract. Then the physician obviously could then terminate them from the practice. Um, so kind of the reason why you're going to terminate the patient will also kind of dictate, I, I would think, kind of <laughs> the assistance that you provide to them. Uh, so one, written notice. Two, give them time to find a replacement. Three, provide bridge scripts. Uh, once again, depending upon specialty, if the patient is on some kind of uh, you know, psych med, some life-saving medication, the physician needs to provide at least a reasonable bridge script, which then allows them time to find a substitute physician as well. Uh, and then lastly, you need to provide information on how the patient uh, can retrieve their medical record. Every state board has, uh, you know, kind of the um, details as far as what a physician has to do in, in providing the medical record um, and then also what a patient has to do to request it. I mean, for most states, it's the patient has to request it in writing and then some states allow for a reasonable um, fee to get the copy of the med record and then they have to state, you know, you know it has to be reasonably available within a Know, a short period of time. I have had plenty of clients who have gotten in trouble for uh, just not providing the medical record in a timely manner. Um, sometimes the physician has no idea any of this is going on and maybe the office manager had some um, you know clashes with the patient and they decide to terminate them and then for whatever reason they kind of you know mess around with providing the record um, in a quick fashion, well, ultimately that can fall on the shoulders of the physician. Um, so I want to make certain that the patient gets their medical record uh, quickly as well. So just to summarize, needs to be written. You need to give them time to find a new physician. You need to, meet, need to provide bridge scripts if possible uh, or necessary. Uh, and then you need to uh, give them access to the medical record. There are patients that there is nothing that you can do to satisfy them. And no matter what, it's going to most likely end up in a board complaint. As long as you're covering 
the things that you're required to do in, in acting ethically and terminating the patient, there should be no issues as far as a, a bark or a board complaint goes. Um, just sticking your head in the sand and not dealing with the patient at all is just it's just a bad idea. I mean, there are some obligations when you're providing medical care to someone. And even though you may want absolutely nothing to do with them just because of how they're acting or maybe they're disruptive, still have to go through the steps to make certain that you're giving a good transition to a new provider. I mean, continuity of care is clearly important. And that's kind of why these general guidelines are in place to make certain that even if someone is disruptive, they're still going to get the care that they need so that it doesn't become a huge issue down the road. Well, hopefully that was helpful. That's a little different than a normal video that I do, but uh, it is a question I get every once in a while that I'd make a video about it. Uh, if you have any questions about your employment contract uh, or I guess general practice issues, you can give my firm a call at the phone number listed below in the description, uh, or you can reach us through our website, ShellyLaw.com. Anyway, appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.